is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and today I'm pleased to have Vinny Paul of Damage Plan on the show. How you doing today, Vinny? Fantastic. Great to be here. How is Damage Plan born? Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, once me and Dime had about five or six songs written, uh, we knew that the music was going to be very diverse. We wanted to make sure that we didn't pigeonhole ourselves into one style, and uh, when we started writing, we had the same feeling as we had when we wrote Cowboys from Hell or even Vulgar Display of Power. We wanted to cover, you know, the heavy, heavy, heavy shit, but also wanted to cover some melody, some deepness, uh, and different sounds, acoustic guitars, clean guitars, you know, just different sounds to really bring more to the table than just a straight-ahead raw metal record. And uh, we auditioned our first three or four people, and we were like, God damn, this ain't going to be easy. You know, we got to find somebody that can belt with the best of them and then also can sing, carry a melody, you know, and... Uh, Pat Lockman, who was the guitar player for Halford's band at the time, uh, we'd really developed a good relationship with him just because we were fans of the Halford band. And, uh, you know, he knew his situation was coming to an end, that Rob was going to be going back to Priest. And uh, he heard some of the material that me and Dom had been writing, and he flipped, man. He just said, dude, i got to be a part of this, you know. And uh, his first in initial reaction was, you know, I could you know, I could play bass for you guys, you know. We're like, no, nah, man, we're really looking for a singer right now, you know. And he's like, man, I can sing. I just never fronted a band before and so uh you know skeptically you think? Yeah. yeah skeptically we gave him a song you know said hey pick a song we had six done at the time uh and do a demo send it to us you know and so he picked the song flew back to la sent it back to us two days later and uh got it popped it on in the car and i just got goosebumps up and down my arms it was the first track that we did together it was called crawl and it just blew me away and i called dime and i said dude have you heard the cd yet you know and he's like no nah, man i'm just chilling on the couch i said get up and put it in right now call me back five minutes later and he goes wow let's get him back down here and let's do a couple more and see where it goes so he came back to texas and uh, we wrote two more songs together and damage plan was born we were like that's our guy let's get it on let's start moving forward and uh he moved to texas after that and uh, we finished writing the record, and uh, once we got done with that, then we had to go through this whole legal battle with the label and all that stuff to get, you know, unwrapped from all the binding stuff that Pantera had at the time. And uh, once we got to that point, then it was time for us to bring in the final link, and we knew we needed a monster on bass, so uh, the first guy that came to mind was Bob, and he was a tattoo artist in Dallas. He'd done tattoos on all of us, and he played in several local bands, and every time we went out to see him, uh, we didn't never watch the band. We just watched him, you know. And so uh, we gave him a couple songs, brought him in, sat down. First, first three songs that we did together, and I stood up and I said, "You know what? You're not only Bob, but you're Bobzilla because you're bringing the heavy low end." Yeah. And uh, we never went any further. He was the guy from the start. Does the songwriting process differ from what went on in Pantera? Uh, some of it that we wrote, we did traditionally, like uh, me and Dime had done in the past with Pantera, just us in a room jamming together. And then we broke the mold and tried some stuff differently this time where I would lay down uh, like a, a drum loop and he would play eight or nine guitar riffs over that and then he would go up and chill out in the house and I would come down play the drums over the different loops the way that I felt like they went and then we'd put them together in Pro Tools you know and really uh, created some songs instead of writing them all the way through something we never did before and it, it really brought a whole nother uh, aspect to it and then after that a third aspect was brought to it a lot of times on a couple of tracks we would give Pat a song that we'd finished musically that we thought was perfect and he would take it and rearrange it in his Pro Tools and move it around huh. and it would give it a whole other face and you know it was just really good it was a really good uh, collaboration between all three of us and we really had a good time writing the material now tell me how Corey Taylor of Slipknot and Stone Sour fame got involved in the project I oh, mean it's just like uh, the same thing with Zach or anything you know we're just all friends and we've made friends with just about every band we've ever played with and they were in town uh, with the Stone Sour band and uh, they came to the clubhouse as every band comes to in Dallas and uh, we went and we're hanging on the bus and we were playing some of the new stuff and the track Fuck You came on and uh, it, Pat had only done one verse at the time and anyways Co Corey's just like man you know I want to be on that you know so alright we're going to send it to you you know and he just finished his tour we sent it back to him at home in Iowa and he sent it back to us and it just blew us away he does the second verse and then the, the bridge section and he also doubles the courses with Pat at the end so uh, it just gave it a, a little bit more a little bit more teeth you know the song was already totally cutting edge to begin with but having Corey on there was nice Pro Tools has really made it easier for you guys to, to toss do. it up a little more <laughs> you can right? do all kinds of stuff I mean 
you know, they had that thing where Jimmy Page cut his guitar parts in London and Puff Daddy did his shit in New York and somebody else did theirs somewhere else. You know, it's it's uh, amazing what you can do in the digital format, which uh, you couldn't do 10, 12 years ago when it was just all analog. So you guys have really embraced it then. Yeah, I mean, you know, technology is something that should be used. I mean, uh, you know, you got to remember when they sent a guy to the moon, the computer, you know, system was the size of three or four of these buses, you know, and now they got it on a chip this big. Yeah. You know? So, and I imagine a few more years from now, it'll be on a chip that big, you know. Now, tell me the story about Zach Wild and about how he was he was going to go to the airport, but he missed his plane. Well, he was uh, in Texas to shoot the uh, Guitar World cover with Dime when they both got voted, uh, I think, most valuable guitarists, and uh, they did the thing in the whole camo outfit, and they were drinking as usual all day long and uh you know we got back to the house once again we put on the new stuff and zach heard the track and we're like you ought to throw a lead on there and he's like fuck let's do it brah <laughs> you know he's always gun ho for everything and his flight was just about to leave you know so we ran out of the studio hooked him up on the damn uh you know les paul and he went to work and did it was like second take nailed the lead at the end of reborn it was fucking sick and uh you know we just said high-fived hugs and going to the airport you know and he went to the airport get a phone call about 10 30 i'm sitting at the bar drunk i missed my flight dime come get me i'm coming back over there so he comes back over to dimes winds up sticking around for two or three days gets in all kinds of trouble with the warden bob ran his wife uh they wind up taking this rental car that was there at dimes house for some reason uh, oh it was the guy was supposed to take uh zach and to the airport he it, the limousine service was out so they brought a rental car and dimes said dude just leave it here for tonight you know we're gonna have some fun with this thing so zach gets behind the wheel they're both fucking shit faced they take off in dimes little community and uh take out about 15 mailboxes oh man uh, total the car everything and uh you know the next day you know zach finally flew out and here they are the arlington police department yeah we're on the website we're gonna get him that guitar player from ozzy you know and all this it's some pretty hairy shit but they got out of all of it but uh it was a good time now what does the name damage plan mean to you personally it means the exact same thing it meant when they were building the atomic bomb they had a plan in mind and they were going to blow some shit up and that's exactly where we're coming from and newfound power the name of the album newfound power was the term that we came up with on super bowl sunday which is kind of ironic, and this is a, a, an ironic story, but it was the year that the Patriots and the Rams played, and uh, that was the day that me and Dime decided it was time for us to quit waiting around, put together a new band, and when we started talking about this, you know, we said, dude, it's going to be tough. You know, we're going to have to find a new place. We're going to have to reach inside and find a newfound power, and that's where that came from. And like I said, ironically enough, on that particular day, Bob was at my house giving tattoos, and then me and Don talked to Pat earlier on the phone, and he said, be sure and bet on the Patriots, because his name's Pat. And uh, little did we know, six months later, we'd all be in a band together. It was kind of really ironic how we'd all communicated that same day, but we didn't have any idea that that was going to eventually be where we're all at. How personal are songs F you and pride to you? You know, they all came from... Uh, emotions that me and Don were feeling, Pat was feeling, uh, thoughts, things that uh, we had all gone through and, uh, you know, we're feeling at the time, you know, uh, a lot of the same things, uh, you know, anxiety and uh, betrayal and stuff that me and Don had felt. Pat was also going through the same stuff uh, with the Halford camp at the time and all that. And it's not directed at anybody in particular. You know, songs are written uh, to where people can interpret them however they want you know people are always coming up to me and going oh you wrote fuck you about phil i said no everybody in their life has a nemesis and somebody that they want to tell the fuck off and that's what the song was written for is to give you you know the energy and and the mindset to say hey fuck you you know you know uh, a lot of the songs on there are very um vicious very the v- vicious like attitude it's heavy music baby. yeah it's heavy music and you guys have really been able to tap into that you know uh, like like i was saying even the song reborn it's talking about pretty much rising from a death in your life whatever it is you know you've been knocked down now you're coming re- you're becoming alive again right but even in that song it's like you want a piece of me come and get it a lot of people have to find a way to recreate themselves or uh, reinvent themselves to continue to do what they want to do whether they're a pro athlete or a musician or, or even a business guy you know you have to take different angles and uh you know you get burned at times and when you do you know it makes you want to come out swinging twice as hard and definitely take an angle where you know 
you have the advantage, so to speak, this time around. So uh, hopefully, like I said, you know, it's not only something that uh, gives us strength when we get up on stage and when we're thinking about the fact that, you know, we're starting over and we're rebuilding this thing. I mean, there's no way that we'd think, uh, you know, we were going to go right into playing arenas or anything. You know, we knew it was going to be a new band and starting over. And same thing with other people. You know, hopefully they'll get that uh, message and it'll mean something to them. So now, how has the Headbangers Ball Tour been for you, and what makes this unique? I think it's kick-ass because all four of the bands are really different. You know, we're all heavy metal. We all come from the same genre. But uh, you got, you know, Hardcore with Hatebreed. Uh, you got Damage Plan, which is straight-up metal. You got uh, Drowning Pool, which is more on the new metal tip. And then you got Unearth, which is more of a speed metal band, you know. So uh, it's just great to have everybody together. This is a... One of my favorite tours, I don't know if it's because I hadn't been on tour in a long time or just because uh, everybody gets along so good, but we have such a great time. Uh, there's no egos out here. Everybody's on the same level, and it's just really cool. Love being a part of it. Now, what's next for Damage Plan? Uh, we finished this tour, actually, uh, with Hatebreed in Portland in about three days, and then we continue on our own to all of Western Canada, back through, uh, I guess it's like uh, Montana and all that good stuff, back towards Texas. We get home on the 22nd, and then we leave on the 28th to go to Europe. And we do uh, a bunch of headlines for major festivals with Metallica over there, including the down low. And then we fly directly from London to Halifax, Nova Scotia. And we hook up in eastern Canada and do all of that with Slayer. And wow. after that, then we'll do some more of our own shows. And then we'll see what happens for the summer. We're still trying to get our plans together all the way for that. Some of the highlights were of your time in Pantera. I'm oh, in 1994 having a number one album when nobody knew who the fuck we were except our fans, you know? I mean, uh, the industry, I remember seeing, you know, Overnight Sensation, Pantera, bullshit. We played seven years in nightclubs and been out lumping it for four goddamn years on a major label. And, you know, everybody that were our fans, you know, that that shows what the industry knows about music you know everybody was like bonnie Raitt's gonna have a number one record ace of bass and you know and we came out and we fucking smoked them you know number one and then uh, you know playing in moscow in 92 with uh, metallica to nearly a million people it's twice as big as woodstock is a huge memory and then probably uh the last memory is the last tour we did which was called uh extreme still it was us and slayer and uh static x was also on at a band called scrape and morbid angel and that whole tour we just fucking slayed america all over the place and it was great man and uh you know we're looking forward to moving on and doing some more of that but obviously you know things have changed so uh we're doing the damage plan and hopefully at some point we'll be able to get back to that stature where we can you know bring the damage the damage that's right the damage <laughs> tour you know so uh, the damaging tour you know bring all these other bands out with us and do the same kind of stuff again what are wh who would you say are some of your biggest musical influences uh, i mean band wise the four biggest bands that always turned me on when i was a kid was kiss van halen judas priest and black sabbath and the coolest thing about it was is that I actually had an opportunity uh, to play with KISS. We did their whole South American tour on the reunion tour. We did Black Sabbath all over the United States and all over uh, Europe on their reunion tour. And uh, we did Judas Priest in 90, their last tour they did before they split up, uh, the Painkiller tour. And so the only other one was the original Van Halen. And if they ever got back together, we were hoping to do that. So uh, we tried to get on the bill with Hagar, which is still fans of that, but I think they're looking for something more pop so still if someday they ever play with dave i'd love to be on the same stage with them cool right now how do you feel about that whole dave hagar thing i love them both man i mean you know obviously we grew up with yeah. the dave era stuff and that's the closest but you know van halen with dave sold 17 or 18 million david you know i mean van halen with sammy did like over yeah. 50 million yeah. you know so and sammy's awesome i mean we me and dime just got to jam with him on my birthday out in vegas nice uh he was playing uh at the palm and we we didn't even know anything about it man and he's like we met him a couple times through passing but never really got to hang and uh he found out we were out in the crowd he's like call him up man so we came up and we did you really got me which we heard he never does dave songs he always does his you know the van halen songs that he did so that was kind of breaking the mold and then we did a uh, wild thing which me and dime and never played in our lives because that's just way too old for us but uh we made it through it and had some fun with it and he was just super cool it was great hey bro it's been good having you on the blaring out with eric blair show great to be here with vinnie paul of damage plan signing off Bye bye the blaring out show